Hi everyone, today's video is all about electric cars. I know I've had one, I've had the Tesla, but I'm here at Porsche Preston and they've lent me a Porsche Taycan 4S for a couple of days. And we're going to be looking at it and seeing really whether electric is the future. So here we are in the Porsche Taycan 4S. What is this car all about? Well, it's 2.2, 2.3 tonnes worth of absolute horsepower, acceleration, performance. They are amazing things. I have driven um, a Taycan a number of times. But I do want to do a little bit today on what's it like living with one. And honestly, are electric cars the future? I've already had a Tesla, of many, as many of you will know. And to be honest, I love the experience. I really did. Um, I think, personally, the way that I use the vehicle it's not really long journeys on motorways, but um, the, the way that I used the vehicle was just tottering around town a lot of the time. Um, honestly, the, the electric vehicle and the charging from home really suited. But this isn't the type of vehicle to buy or even contemplate if you're thinking about tottering around town. This is a performance car, no ifs or buts. Now, I could go on the motorway on the way home, but that would be a little boring. I'm going to head back through Southport and, uh, and have a little look at some different type of roads too. Not necessarily use this thing to its full potential because it's got, honestly, I don't even know the stats. I know it's um, 400 odd horsepower. It might even be a little bit more than that on boost and when you go into launch mode, which I'm not going to do. Um, I've got no interest in that, but um, we are going to have a little look and see how this thing does handle. First thing I would like to talk about is the suspension in these Taycans. Um, they've got air suspension. You can change the different modes. What's it at the moment? It's in normal mode at the minute. Um, and effectively, you've got four cars in one you've got a range mode um, and let's just twist this back down to range mode so it's in uh, range mode now it limits the speed uh, ironically it limits here on the dashboard to 90 miles an hour um, it lowers the suspension it makes it a little bit more aerodynamic and tries to get the most out of the battery in my experience with the Taycan they're not um, brilliant economy wise um, they're nothing like my Tesla was um, to be honest I think they've sacrificed the economy for the performance I suppose the Porsche brand that's what it's all about so you've got range mode I'm going to put it back into normal mode I want to straighten up notice it was a little bit harder there um, range mode like I said it, it hunkers down and sticks to the road a little bit more and lowers itself um, I'm going to stick it back into normal mode because I find that in the Taycan is um, a little bit softer setting on the suspension. Now I do need to follow for Southport. I have got the sat nav on but I am going to be uh, following a few directions here. Um, the big thing that always surprised me with the Taycan, Taycan, whichever way you would like to say it, is the braking ability. The acceleration ability is ludicrous, even in this 4S, and this isn't even the quick one, this is second from the bottom, but the acceleration is phenomenal. It's absolutely frightening in these things. And I know most electric cars are quick, but honestly, the Porsche Taycan is um, on a different planet, um, even in this 4S. If you use your car in a spirited way though, even an electric car, it's going to deplete the battery very, very quickly. So it's not something that I'm all about. Um, my whole premise of driving is just to get to A to B as safely as I can. So would I make use of a vehicle like this? Um, no, it's a nice place to be. The fit and finish in these Porsches, it's absolutely amazing. Everything's solid. It's really nicely put together. Uh, the options list is something that's a little bit contentious, in my opinion. Um, you get basic kit with them, but 
you want added extras, uh, this one hasn't even got memory seats. It's got electric seats, but it hasn't even got memory seats. Um, options can skyrocket the price. And this vehicle, I'm not sure of the actual cost of it, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was in excess of £100,000. And that brings me on to the accessibility of these types of vehicles. Is this vehicle going to be purchased by a private buyer? Well, only a very wealthy one. Most of the time, it's going to be a business buyer. And there are still benefits to businesses, um, although they're getting less, there's still benefits, is benefits to businesses to buy electric cars. But at over £100,000, it's not for the masses. Most definitely not. So going back to what I was saying about the comfort, um, in normal mode like we've got it now, it's like a Bentley. It's so supple, it's so compliant, it's so smooth. It's obviously quiet, um, but there is some road noise, and road noise with big, wide, 21-inch tyres on, it's always going to be a thing. But that's what I even found about the, te uh, the Tesla that I had, that you substitute engine noise for road noise, and that's all that you've got in this, but it's a lovely place to be, and you can do many miles in big comfort, to be honest. I'm just gonna stick the regeneration back on. It's not something that you can change when uh, you're in a Taycan. It's either on or it's off. And when you change your uh, your drive modes here on this, uh, on this controller, it turns the regen off. So if you put it back to normal, press the regen and then it it just gives you a little bit of that um, hold back and pull back uh, through the electric motors as you're slowing down and I like that way of driving. Another thing that I'd quickly like to mention is the size of these Taycans. They're absolutely massive. I think they're close to five meters long. They're really wide. Just got to be careful of the green one here. Um, parking in a normal parking bay when you're in a uh, a shopping car park is really awkward because they really don't fit and that is a trait that we're seeing on these modern cars so all this performance and we're still stuck doing the same speed limit um, and that really puts it into perspective but why do people buy vehicles like this well there are certain scenarios where the extra performance can get you out of problems. So I see it. Just because you've got it under your right foot doesn't mean you've got to use it. Handling is also something that I was absolutely blown away by when um, I first drove a Taycan. Little look as we go around this roundabout. I've got to be careful <coughs> of where this lorry is going. And we've had to slow for the Morrisons van. I'm just going to hold back. I ain't going in that space. And it was a good job as well, wasn't it? <clears throat> okay, let's have a little look at the performance. 30. Wow, 53. There is a two-stage gearbox in these vehicles, as you've probably found. You accelerate to a certain level. I'm going to slow it down a bit. Um, you accelerate to a certain level, but then if you press the accelerator even more, all it does is sort of like gives you that extra boost with a sort of like effective lower gear. I don't know exactly how it works, but it's absolutely frightening. And like I said, this isn't even the quick one. This is the 4S. This is at one above base. It's scary. But even with its size, the Taycan is a classic Porsche. You can see by the uh, the, the sides of the bonnet, you can see exactly where the front wheels are. Um, there is a new design language that's come from Porsche over the last um, few years with the Taycan, and they've got a few new models coming out. Not sure whether the 911 is going to take a, a similar look to it, but honestly, uh, it is a classic Porsche from all angles. All the dials and the displays, the classic Porsche, although they're not the uh, the analog dials like they used to be they're in the same layout as uh, as porsches have been over the years uh, the display on the dash is pretty good it does get obstructed by the steering wheel these side areas quite a bit and your hands um, but for me honestly the speedo in the middle um, 
and on the left hand side that's all you need I actually don't use the displays that much I'm always listening to what I'm doing speed wise this is where we had a clip um, the other month with a vehicle that crashed into that wall sort of recognized it um, it was I think on one of the driving fails where uh, I think the person must have had a a medical episode went straight into the wall. I thought I recognised it, I thought it was up this way. But so, yeah, so the, the screen in front of me, it's okay. Um, like I said, it's not a big deal for me. You can change all the different settings and have on the screen whatever you wish, like you can do on most modern cars. This screen, though, on navigation, it's, uh, it's not my favourite piece of kit. I just prefer um, the sort of, like, not the satellite view, but just the normal view. I think um, the extra view of the fields, I don't need to see fields, um, it sort of gets in the way, however, I've not had a problem following it up to now, but the screen itself, you can do many things, I'm not even going to mess with it, to be honest, a, a touch screen is a touch screen nowadays, it takes your attention away from the road, and honestly, resist that temptation of using them, it's no different to a mobile phone for me. Let's try and find some potholes on purpose, honestly. It's really smooth. Doesn't half soak up them. Um, honestly, I think it's better than any car I've been in in the last couple of years. Who do you know purposefully goes looking for potholes? I don't want to damage it, obviously. It's not my car. And again, big thanks to Porsche Preston for lending me this for a couple of days. So would I have been able to go any quicker if I'd borrowed a Renault Zoe for a couple of days? No, I wouldn't have done. Um, and that's the whole point of a couple of things, or one of the things that I'm saying is uh, you can't be going any quicker in a lorry than you can doing this. I know physically this thing's much faster, but where do you use it nowadays? I don't think our roads are suited to have a vehicle of such high performance, but Things would be a little boring if we all chose and had the same vehicles. This is a lovely place to be. Is it a nicer place to be than my Ford Focus? Absolutely. But honestly, £100,000 for a driving school car? No chance. But as you can see, I've not really had loads of fun. The fun lasts a second, then you're up to the speed limit. Does this encourage people to break speed limits? Something like this? Absolutely. Very few people who own one of these are going to be super sensible, um, like me, but honestly, it's more than my uh, life and my job's worth to go off and uh, get myself into an accident or get a speeding ticket just because I'm testing out a car. So we're going to have a little look to see what driving a Porsche Taycan is like round town. Is it too big? Well, space-wise, it is really wide. I'm going to put the uh, the stats for the length and the width of this. Um, and I tell you what, I'll put it in comparison to my Ford Focus, which I actually think is a pretty big normal car. Um, my Focus is a fair bit wider and longer and bigger than my Golf that I had. So um, we're going to have a little look to see what this is like driving around town. This is uh, this is Southport. I know Southport very well. Sat nav's going to. Uh, say we've arrived shortly um, I don't need any I probably didn't even need sat nav from Preston to be honest but I put it on um, but I definitely don't need any sat nav from here um, all the way up to Liverpool where I live but width wise um, does my left knee trick work I'm gonna just get into this middle section of this road with me left knee Have a little look in both mirrors gap is exactly the same so left knee in the middle that works and uh, your right knee, let's have a little look. The car's a little wider than my right knee. If you haven't, or if you don't know what I'm talking about, please check out my videos. I'll leave a, a little link in the description about my videos on left and right knee positions. Effectively, your left knee is about where your middle of your car is, and your right knee is not a million miles off where your right wheels are, or the right side of your car, but it, it feels as though it's a little the car is a little wider than my right knee with my seat in position so um, it's one thing to bear in mind when you do drive a different car in a new car just have a little look on where you're at and try and work out the width just what should I do with the lorry here I'm just gonna hold back for this guy there's a bigger space here for him 
I'm going to hit the tree. Let's see whether I've uh, judged this well enough. Definitely the right thing to do to uh, let him come through. You're okay, buddy. Yeah, he doesn't want to hit the Porsche. I don't want to scratch the Porsche either. But yeah, look far, see whether there's any little spaces for vehicles coming the other way uh, to pull in. If there's no room, especially for a big lorry, um, fix it, sort the situation. There's nothing new there. You've seen me do that many times. But it's a lovely, relaxing place to be as we arrive into the back end of Southport. So, what should I do with this cyclist behind? Hopefully, you can see them in this uh, interior camera. He's not down the left side, there's not enough room, and he's just holding on my back quarter. And now he's positioning. I just want to come through, but I think uh, ah, he's turning left. He gave me a nice signal. So, yeah, just be careful of cyclists that do want to come past. Now, let's go and see how this vehicle copes with uh, a few little side streets. I don't suppose it's any different than driving a van, this thing. Apart from we've got side windows. So, I'm just going to stick us in this um, parking bay, just for a little second. I'm not going to scrape any wheels. I'm just going to put it in park. But I'm stuck over this bay at the back, or not at the back, at the side, quite significantly. Um, but I am jammed up to the kerb on the left side. Hmm. Would you be worried about getting your, uh, your wing or your wing mirror hit and, and smashed in this thing? I think you would, wouldn't you? Now, let's get heading back to Liverpool. Um, drive mode is on here, on your dash. Um, I like it there, to be honest. I don't think you need it that often. Um, there's no gears to play with, so I think that's actually a nice place to put it, personally. Some people have complained about that. Um, what should I do about the red car? There is a space... Oh, let me go. Thank you. Cheers. Um, let's go and have a little go at a few of these uh, smaller streets. Like I said, what's vision like? It's very good. Around the pillars. Like I said earlier about the uh, bulbous bonnets on the side, you can see exactly where you're placing the car. Um, and vision is very good, even though it's quite a low car. There's a load of glass area. Um, you're not obscured by these pillars, probably as much as you are in my focus. So, honestly, it's no issues. Speed bumps, um, it's not a problem over them. Like we've already mentioned about the suspension, it's super compliant. I am going to change it a little bit further up. I'm going to have a look at seeing how that this car changes its personality because that's what I said at the beginning. Effectively, you've got four cars in one with the flip of this switch. And I know you can do that in many cars, but the actual differences between these modes for me is it stands out a mile in this Porsche compared to everything else I've ever driven. So look at the smoothness over the railway line. Fabulous. I'll have a go at getting round a mini roundabout. Let's see what the steering looks like. I know some of these Taycans, they do have rear wheel steering. It does seem to turn really sharply. I'm not sure whether this one's got rear wheel steering. Um, I'll find out and I will let you know. This can be a problem as well in such a wide vehicle, like we had with the lorry earlier on when I let it go. Um, whereas if you had a normal size vehicle, you might be able to share spaces, but in this, you're less likely for that to happen. So there's absolutely no issues on the tight stuff apart from, like I said, this potential sharing of space. 
but all it means is if the space is a bit smaller compared to the width of your vehicle you just go a little bit slower but again will people do that will they just get in something like this and go oh, it's a porsche it's fast mm, interesting one there is plenty of room in the Taycan also it is a four door car and this particular model hasn't gone for the five seat option um, they just come normally with four single seats and an area in the middle you can spec it to have five seats but there's not much room in that middle seat if you decide to choose it the boot is cavernous um, but it should be because it's a big car we're going to head to a little bit faster roads shortly to have a little look at the performance side of this thing but i'm going to deal with the elephant in the room and it's the absolute colossal depreciation of these vehicles they've taken a massive hit recently all electric cars or most electric cars have and again it's this massive depreciation although it could be written off against um, a business and the amount of tax that you pay honestly it pushes it even more to businesses of the only people who are going to be purchasing electric cars the price of electricity um, was one of the um, starting points to it but there are many different factors i don't know them all but i do know that these things um, the base model Taycans you can pick up nowadays for less than £50,000 and that's ridiculous who can afford to lose maybe £50,000 in a three year period if you had two of them that's a terraced house there's the Audi version of one of these that is effectively the same car with a different shell on um, I think in the press though, people took to the Taycan for its driving dynamics more than they took to the Audi. Never driven one of those Audis, so if Audi want to lend me one and do a comparison, please get in touch. My favourite thing about these Taycans though, is the steering. The feel of it, the weight of it, the directness of it is absolutely amazing. It's the best steering feel i've honestly i've ever had in a car and i've driven some things in my time i suppose a few of the older cars um, you might have got um, a little bit more but it's, it's hard to compare something that you drove 20 years ago but honestly that's the big standout for me how this thing uh, feels to steer is so precise it's immense so a little bit further up we've got the Formby bypass it does change to a 60 limit a bit further up so um, we'll get to go a little quicker but again um, i'd like you to just be conscious of how quickly any so-called fun or enjoyment lasts um, people aspire to these things but Honestly, I don't know whether I've just been dulled by many years of driving and it's my job, but for me, the car is just a work tool. Um, especially these things, these uh, electric ones, I call them an appliance. But right, let's whack it into Sport Plus and then let's see what this thing can do 30 to 60. Go! Whoa! It has got sport sound, can hear it. It sounds like the Starship Enterprise. Um, and it does put a smile on your face. I'm not going to lie. But again, would that make you do it time and time and time again and encourage you to get yourself into issues? Perhaps. So we've got my camera back running again. If it does go off while I'm on this section, yeah, it's one of those things. Uh, we're just going to have a little look at some country roads. So um, let's go and see what this thing can do out in the country roads. I have just spotted a cyclist that has uh, just gone past. So we're going to have to obviously show a little bit of caution with them. But let's go and have a little go. Um, I don't often drive in a spirited manner. Um, but 
we're going to have a little go and I'm going to just verbalise a few of the things that I'm looking at and that I'm doing whilst I'm operating this car. So cyclist, first of all, there's no one overtaking me. I'm going to look far up into the distance. There is a vehicle coming. Um, I could have gone there in this car comfortably, but I'm not going to bother. I had plenty of time to do it. I'm going to choose a time when there's no one coming in the opposite direction. Good example, choose the other lane. Hopefully the vehicle behind will follow. And we have a national speed limit. Okay, uh, it spotted, the car spotted the pedestrian there. Collision warning came up on the dashboard. Um, interesting, all cars do that nowadays. Uh, it does have lane keep assist on. Gonna get back down to 40 now. Um, don't know how quickly I can turn lane keep assist off, but I um, wish it was off. So it'll try and uh, pull me into another cyclist. Um, so we've obviously got the 40 limit. Yeah, I'm looking across corners. Um, no in the world I'd go around that corner on the wrong side of the road in that scenario. Someone could come round really quickly, couldn't see far enough. There you go, I couldn't see those two vehicles cars soaking up the imperfections in the road beautifully and that was a heavy one as well but it, it dealt with it brilliantly park car no one's behind a big problem i'm just backing off just to give me time to deal with it if someone came no clear use the acceleration and we've got a warning of some school kids so again just reducing that speed down a little bit of brake before the corner regeneration is on saw some brake lights up ahead from the car in front. What was that to do just to go around the corner? Perhaps slowing all before the corner, taking a position to the right hand side of my lane. I'm just pinching an inch, I'm leaning to get my best view. No one's overtaking me. Off we go. We're going to see whether uh, there's an opportunity to dispatch this Vauxhall in front if it's needed. Heavy on the brakes, but smooth, relax. Notice my hand position as well. That crossing of the hands, it's no issue in a situation like that. It is a 40 limit. I'm delaying the acceleration until I'm past the 60. Now we can go. There's my 60 limit. So let's deal with this. Catching the one in front, just reducing. There's not going to be an opportunity to overtake just here. I'm making sure my speed's all done and sorted before the corner. Have a quick look across and balance the car beautifully balanced as well this thing fabulous never gets uh tiresome driving this car or this Taycan on roads like this amazing so let's have a little look is there any opportunity for an overtake uh there's a couple of little entrances to the left so i'm not going to bother i'm just going to stay put and that's again foot over for a little bit um, but this thing is massively capable, amazing. The 4S, as you may have guessed, is a four-wheel drive version. They do a model below, just a normal Taycan, which is the two-wheel drive model. Um, and then they do a few above as well. They do the turbo, which um, ironically hasn't got any turbo. Hasn't got a turbo. Turbo is just the um, model line, sorry, not the model line, the trim level. The model is the Taycan, and the trim level is turbo, and that's what Porsche called it nowadays. Um, and then you've got the Turbo S on top of that. And they're just in the process of updating the Taycan for this year. They've, uh, just on the turbo model, for example, I think that one has got 670 horsepower um, now, and someone at Porsche has gone, you know what, that ain't fast enough. I'm gonna give it another 200. That's right, the turbo model for the coming year, the revised version, it's got 860 horsepower. Think about what I've said about this car and then put another 400 horsepower on top of it. It's mind-blowing. And that's not even the quickest one. They've just announced a turbo GT model, which apparently 
has got 1100 horsepower all these things that i've said about this car and this has got 400 odd nah not gonna go into uh, the exact numbers i don't know them like i said i'll put them up on screen if i haven't done already but um who needs 1100 horsepower it's a, just a one-upmanship that's all right let's have a little go down this road <coughs> now i've got to be careful down here again the width of this car comes more into play than it would do in a smaller vehicle yes it's massively capable um but it's really wide so if you think here if i'm in, I'm in my lane gee i'm so close to this if something big came the other way I'd have a lot more problems in this than I would do in my Focus or a different car. So, although this is national speed limit, honestly, I don't think I'm... I'm doing 42 here and I'm slowing down for the bend, obviously, but I don't think I could do much more. I've got big potholes in the road there. Got to take care of them. A little offsiding was okay there. But I've got to be super careful in case something big comes the other way. I'm only doing 40 miles an hour. And that's honestly plenty, although the car could do a lot more. Cross viewing, can't see very far. Lean, still couldn't see. Okay, no problems. Just avoiding all the potholes and the terrible road surfaces as well. Next section, exactly the same. 52 I got up to then. Slow, balanced beautiful slow again smoothly off the brake they can just talk about that a second when you are driving quickly yes you might need to use the brakes quite quick but make sure you use them smoothly whether you're applying or whether you're coming off it's really important for balance balance of a big heavy car like this is uh, massively important as well i am going to take this next road on the left the pedestrian just see me a couple of pedestrians so let's have a little look and walking towards where the oncoming traffic would be okay not gonna see taking a position for best view you can see the road up at the end let's have a little go with the brakes really heavily And that wasn't even as hard as I could do. That was smoothed out at the end. Didn't want all my bags and everything just to come flying off. Like I said, the brakes are massively impressive. I think my interior camera's gone off again. Let's try and get it working. Start recording. Nah, it doesn't want to play. We'll just have to work with this one. Um, but as you can see, voice activation on this is how I can turn this uh, camera on and off but in any case um, we've done a little bit of the fast stuff had a little play fun is short-lived uh, the car just to summarize is mightily impressive like I said if this is the second to base um, frightening thing amazing performance like if you haven't experienced anything like this it's it's nothing like you've experienced before pretty obviously but it's on a different level the instant torque the instant pulling power doesn't even have to be in a gear don't forget and there's only once that i've accelerated enough for it to decide hmm ashley wants to play stupid and it dropped that gear um it's absolutely balmy the rate that this thing performs braking superb steering weight and feel fabulous trim level amazing but a hundred thousand pounds and potentially it's going to lose you maybe 40 50 thousand pound horn sounds okay thumbs up for that but yeah it's a hundred thousand pound perhaps and it's going to lose you maybe 40 50 thousand pounds within a three-year period it's a lot of money that isn't it um is this really a perfect little summary for it as well 
this bin wagon is going to get really close to the curb and will I have enough room to fit past? Don't know. No idea. Is he waiting there now? Let's have a little look. I don't think I'm fitting past there. Get to this bit. Wing mirrors, widest. Yeah, I'm good. Just about. Cheers, buddy. Folded his uh, mirror in. Thanks, boss. Phew. Didn't scratch it. I um, think it's time to go home. Uh, it's a big, wide vehicle, this. Keep safe, everyone. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you soon.